A few days ago, Nechlin posted up a video uh, where he's uh, responding to an article written on a CNN blog and saying how he disagrees with it. Um, the article was about homosexuality and how the Bible may not uh, clearly state that it is uh, something bad. And obviously Nephilim uh, said that it is bad, it's an abomination to God, and basically quoted uh, Leviticus saying that uh, whoever uh, does this thing should be put to death. And I was doing some research, looked around the web uh, and the Bible, and searched what else is an abomination. And I found this article, I'll put a link to it in the description, Putting Abominations in Perspective by Linda A. Malcolm. Uh, excuse me if I say your, or your name wrong. Uh, I don't see a date when he posted this. I guess it was posted quite a while ago. Anyway, uh, in this um, article, uh, there is some extensive work uh, mentioning where in the Bible uh, the word abomination is uh, mentioned and what it refers to. And while yes, abomination is, meant, is referred to homosexuality in uh, two or three places, and all other places, uh, he talks about other things, uh, be it uh, eating kosher food, and not taking uh, money with interest, and uh, not laying with another man's wife, uh, not having sex with a woman on a, on a period, and uh, seven uh, deadly sins are basically also abominations. So, since we, are not, we don't have any real laws about uh, having sex with women under a period, why do we have, why do we go out of our way uh, to stop this one abomination of uh, homosexuality? And, well, I'm sure this point was talked about quite a while in different places and can be read about in different uh, uh, webs, uh, websites. I would like to make another point. Now, the Bible says that if a man sleeps with another man as he sleeps with another woman, uh, that is an abomination. And I would like to address this point specifically. Is it an abomination to shake an ad uh, for two men to shake hands? I'm pretty sure everyone would agree that, no, that's perfectly fine. And if that's fine, then what about a hug? Can one man hug another man without being called a homosexual abomination and be put to death? I'm sure that hug is also acceptable. And what about a kiss? Well, the question is, where do you draw the line? Uh, I would suppose that a, literal, a literalist reading the Bible would say, well, the line is, if he lies uh, with a man as he does with another woman. Okay, so let's start two things here. For for one thing, we say, okay, so what if he has sex, standing up, or sitting down? They're not lying together, so is that okay in that case? So again, I'm, I, I the, the, the devil's advocate here as well, and I'll say, no, no, any kind of sex means lying together. Okay, okay, so let's suppose that they lie together in the same bed, but they don't have sex. Is that okay then? And now, um, I guess I will need a real uh, <laughs> literalist uh, to answer these questions because now it's going to get a little bit more complex. Let's suppose we take sex out of the picture. Two men love each other, care for each other, but they are in two different countries. They never meet each other, they just talk to each other on Skype or whatever. Um, if there were men and a woman, those two could even get married uh, over the phone doesn't happen too often, but it does happen and there are no laws against it. Now, if these two are men and they are in different countries, there is no, they will never have sex and they, they never had sex and so on. So, there would be no uh, risk of this abomination happen. So, in that case, they can also uh, get married. Oh, you want to be even safer? Let's suppose, yes, they are in the same country, but one of them had an accident and 
he's missing uh, all his <laughs> private parts. And so you will, oh, oh, not even both. Both of them don't have their uh, penis, so they cannot have sex. And can you marry two men uh, like that? And let's take this a step further. Uh, we know, for example, that uh, uh, having sex with a woman on her period is an abomination. Yes. Okay. So you say we don't want to let two men marry each other because they, then they might have sex, and that is an abomination. And we don't want to open the door to abomination. So someone else can say, well, but you let a man and a woman get married, and they might have sex uh, when she has her period, or if you want to put it even uh, in a different perspective should it be illegal for women to get married if they are on their period on that on their wedding day because obviously they will probably have sex on the wedding night right so if she has her period and we don't want an abomination to happen then we should have a law saying that women cannot marry uh, on the if they have a period and, and uh, well that is if you want to avoid abomination and obviously I doubt that law will ever come to to be sure it is in the Jewish uh, law they do I don't know if they stop a wedding, a wedding from happening if there is a period but they always try to get the period beforehand or after using uh, birth control medicine but if you're trying to make laws to stop abominations abominations from happening then you should also have a law about not marrying a woman on her period. And obviously that does not happen, and so you have no ground to stand on. And also all the eating kosher food, uh, uh, seafood, uh, pigs, all, all those are considered abominations. And when, when uh, we have, I've heard that Christians uh, walk around this, those laws about kosher food, they were only meant until Jesus came because we didn't want, uh, because God didn't want uh, the Jews to be contaminated by the dirty food, and therefore after Jesus came, you can eat non-kosher food. Well, by that logic, you can say that God didn't want us to contaminate each other by having gay sex, but after Jesus came, it's okay, now we can have gay sex. Uh, also, another point, all the rules in Leviticus uh, only apply to Jews, and so if you're not Jewish, then I guess <laughs> it's a terrible abomination. So that's a lot of points. Uh, would be interesting if a Christian were to reply to this and tell me where I got it wrong. And uh, I would love to talk about this. Uh, so, bottom line, um, just because it says it in the Bible doesn't mean you should live your life by it. Sure, some things in the Bible are good, most of that. Uh, live well and be well. See ya.